In this video, I'll show you how to use the time value of money tables. So uh, what I have right here is the chapter four homework problems. And recall that in the beginning of every homework assignment, I have the homework formulas and resources posted at the top in the instructions. So what I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to read the tables here, as well as how those tables work in terms of the different formulas, depending on the scenario. So when you look down below, you'll see a couple of questions that ask you to use the time value of money tables to calculate a situation. So when you uh, take a look at the top here, you'll see a brief description of a table and a hyperlink that will take you out to that table. But um, the first table that you'll see is a future value of a dollar after a given number of time periods. In other words, this table um, and its corresponding formula is used to figure out what the future value of a single amount deposited will be worth in the future. So you can see here in the formula, um, imagine how much I'm depositing today and say, I wanna know what it's worth in five years at a particular percentage, um, then I have to find what that factor is. So we get that factor from the table. So I'll go ahead and show you this uh, first table here. And you can see it'll have like a short title, like future value of a dollar. So for instance, um, over here on the left, the periods refer to the number of years. And then across the top is the percentage. So whatever rate you're getting um, on you know, the amount that you're depositing or perhaps the interest rate that you'd be losing if you didn't save this much money or uh, kind of depends on um, like the wording of the problem. But let's say um, in that same example, I am interested in knowing, hey, what is a dollar worth five years from now at 3%, right? So um, I mentioned five years, so I'll go down the periods row. So there's five, that means five years. And again, I mentioned 3% is the rate uh, I'm working with. So if I look across the top, I'll keep looking until I see 3%. And then I just have to be careful in reading. And you'll notice that the rows kind of alternate in color to help you um, like read the table a little bit easier. But the factor would be 1.15927. And so um, you would take this number and multiply it about by the amount of money you're depositing, whether it's a dollar today or $500, you would just take that deposit one time and multiply it against this factor. Now uh, you're like, what if it's more than 3%? Then you just wanna scroll down because there's a um, second table and that'll be the larger percentage numbers from, in this case, four up to 12%. I'm curious, yeah, and that's as far as it goes. So just keep in mind, in order to read the table, you need two pieces of information. You need to know how many periods, which is the years, and you need to know the percentage rate you're working with. Um, and so once you identify those two, you'll find the factor that meets both requirements, and then you'll use that to multiply against. So you can see here, um, I, there's the multiplication, and then that factor comes from the table. So you just multiply the two numbers together. Same thing goes for um, the other formulas. You can see there's a particular number in front, and then you'll multiply it by the factor that comes out of that table. So the second table here, this is for a future value of a dollar. So very similar to the first one, except instead of a lump sum, like a one-time deposit, it's a uh, series of deposits. So imagine you were depositing a certain amount of money every year. Um, that's known as an annuity, think annual. Um, and so if you look at the table, it will look very similar to the last one. It has, you know, periods or the number of years, as well as percentages across the top. Um, but just be careful when you're reading to make sure you know which table you're using. Um, it, there's a title here. It says this is the future value of an ordinary annuity. So, and then once you find that factor, that once you find that number in the table, you can go back and plug it into um, your formula here. So again, imagine you're saving, I don't know, like a hundred bucks a year. Uh, the hundred goes here and then your factor from the table goes right in here. Now the third and fourth tables here are switching gears a bit. Instead of future value, we're not thinking present value. So this third one here, 
present value of a dollar to be received at the end of a given number of time periods. Again, we're doing a lump sum scenario here, but what this third table lets us do is to determine how much needs to be deposited today one time in order for it to grow to a desired amount. So let's say you have a goal to buy a house in the future and you know you, how much money you'll need at that time, then that future amount and you can see here it's described in the formula, that desired future value, like I want 50,000 in the future, um, that's the number that would go here, and then you have to go find the factor for that. Again, how many years out and at what percentage rate um, you're earning for you know that deposit um, will be found in the table. So you'll see at the top, it'll say present value of a dollar. You gotta know how many years and you gotta know the percentage. Um, but again, this table has a slightly different purpose um, than the other ones, right? So think about, I know what I want in the future, but I don't know how much I need to save today. So that's what this table helps us to figure out. And then the last one here, the present value of a dollar received at the end of each period for a given number of time periods. So this will help us determine how much money can be withdrawn on a regular basis. So it's uh, the concept of an annuity again, like on an annual basis. And this will let us know um, how much money I can pull out annually. Um, let's say I'm in retirement and I want to pull out um, $5,000 a year for expenses. So I can use this formula to work backwards to figure out um, what that uh, present value has to be. So again, you'll um, go to uh, the fourth table here and you can see it's called present value of an or ordinary annuity, but it's still the same structure. Um, you've got the number of periods or years and then the percentages up at the top. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me anytime or come by my Zoom office hours, but you'll see um, at least one problem using each of these tables and the corresponding formulas um, down below in the homework.